All right, now we're on to unit three. First off, let's get rid of this thing. And then let's import. First, I gotta set my input to Blender or Maya. And I am going to import my wavefront object. The wavefront object can be found under the unit files. And it is called Unit 3 Palette. All right, I love using this example in the classroom. Love it. Uh, the one thing about this example is it, it can be taught in about three different ways. So we're going to kind of look at two of those ways. I think. There we go. I want turntable. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Well, this is the story behind this object. You have many things, and they're all the same thing. There's only three unique things in this whole makeup of this item. Okay? So, that means we can exclude those three different things, and those three things are the ones that we UV, and then we make copies. And now we can make unique UVs, or we can make stacked UVs. And I'll show you, because students love to talk about stack UVs. They, they just love to put one UV on top of the other. I have no idea why. But, all right, so let's look at terminology and stacked UVs compared to unique UVs. And I'll show you the difference between the two right off the bat. That way, you're, you can use either or, but um, you might see the advantages of using unique UVs. So you might see that I'm more partial to unique UVs. All right, let's go to edit mode. Um, I need this item, so if I click this and hit L, if I highlight one vertice, hit L, and go mesh, vertices, separate by selection. I need one of these boards, so highlight the board with L, mesh, vertices, separate by selection, and I need one of these top boards, mesh, vertices, separate by selection. Okay, then let's go to object mode and delete everything else. So this whole group right here can go away. All right, so we're talking about comparing two things. So let's make a copy. And side by side. And that means we're gonna have to do two separate maps, but that's all right. This, is, this isn't a hard map. It's pretty easy to produce. Both items need to be unwrapped. So maybe I'll do the unwrapping before I copy it, right? So yeah, let's do the unwrapping first. Now, how would I unwrap this? Let's see. I would probably start with the corner, just like I always do. Follow the edge. Now that edge is going to be showing, right? So maybe I should do the inside edge. That way, if there is any seams, they'll be on the inside of the palette and nobody's going to see them. Okay, I'll need that one and I'll need that one. So you can see what would happen. Need that one. And this one's going to be a little trickier. I'm going to have to go into wireframe. There we go. I'll go back to solid. And I'll mark these seams. Okay, let's launch the UV texture editor. Let's hit L. Oh, it looks like most of it's unwrapped for you, but this will be a better unwrap. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's bent. So, how do we alleviate the bent? Well, I need to cut some stress lines. I need one here, 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 and here. 
Okay. A U unwrap. Okay, that's obviously wrong. So let's back that up just a little bit. And we'll mark these seams over here. I think I hit a button by accident. Okay, so these are the ones I'm aiming at. A, U, unwrap. And you can see, did a nice job, but it's got some overlapping UVs. See how these UVs are unfolded? And that can't happen. So wherever this line is right here, that's where I need to cut. Now, that's where that sink comes in. Where is that line at? In this case, it is right there. So that's telling me right there to mark a seam. And it's also telling me right here to mark a seam. And you can see, that's a much better layout. What would make it even better is the fact that these two islands are separated by something. You know what I mean? Like you don't want that. You want it all one big island if you can. So what if I took and made a cut here and here? Let's mark those seams. Here and here. Mark those seams. And then we clear this one and clear this one. Let's see what, how much better that looks. Okay, now some of the bigger pieces are on there and some of the smaller pieces are left behind. But look at this. I can put this one here. So I'll mark that seam. Or clear that seam. Uh, this one, uh, clear that seam. This one connects to that one, clear that seam. And this one connects to that one. So clear that seam. A, U, unwrap. There we go. One big solid chunk. And that's what you want right there. So you can see it is kind of complex in a way that you have to kind of think, you know, it, it's like a, a video game. You, the game is produced as little seams as possible and as little islands as possible. That one was hard. The rest is pretty simple. The hard part's coming up with these exercises. Okay, in this case, Mark a seam, mark a seam, A, U, unwrap. And you can see that unwrapped quite nicely. I'm not really worried about distortion this way. This is a board, so what's gonna happen is it's gonna have a texture grain on it and the grain of wood runs with a linear path like this and you can't screw up a wood pattern. So I'll show you what I mean by that. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to have the texture in hand to actually go in and explain what that means. Okay, mark seam, A, U, unwrap. Again, there we go. So I have three major parts. What I'm gonna have to do is lay them out so I can have all three parts on a zero to one. Now, to do that, there, the easiest way to do it is join them together. Just for a second, just to get them joined 
And that way they're all three part of the same thing. And then I go highlight them all using A and go to average island scale. And then I go into UVs, pack islands. Perfect. Now let's rotate all of these. I have to turn sync off. Go over here, hit A. So L, shift L, shift L, rotate, negative 90. Rotate, enter after you're done. And now I'm just going to scale these just a little bit down. But I'm going to scale them all at once. Well, now here's the story. This one, we're going to treat as the stacked UVs. Okay, so we're not going to do anything to this except for rebuild the part. I'm going to separate these just by a little bit. And now I have to rebuild this part. So again, I could do it this way, which is a little bit easier. I can grab this part using L, Shift D, and then move that down. Get into a top view, hit 5 so I can get into orthographic. Shift D, move that down. Let's do the same with this part right here, L. Shift-D, and I'm going to constantly hit Shift-D, then right-click, Shift-D, right-click, move, Shift-D, right-click, move. That's what I love about Blender is that you can be in component mode and make such quick copies of things. Yeah. Okay. Okay, again, I'm just going to hop in the top. Shift D. Move that until it's centered. Shift D. Move it until it's centered. So, what this is is now stacked UVs. You can see there is only three here, but there's all kinds of parts. This saves you texture resolution. Now you could, in theory, go like this and scale these up a little bit. Since the bottom part is probably made out of a different kind of wood anyway, it wouldn't hurt. In other words, this would probably be made out of a, a regular just board cut out and these would be planks, so two different kinds of types of wood. One's more rough and this one's more defined. So that's stacked UVs. And we're going to texturize this, but first we're going to have to make the other one, which is uh, unique UVs. So meet me back in the next video where we can take this one, duplicate it over, and then fix it.